So today, Jess, we're hoping to get some um, of your thoughts and feelings about how the portfolio presentation and um, whole process was for you last year. So can you give me a sense of what it was like for you to, to work through that um, portfolio presentation and process? Um, at the end of grade 10, we, I looked at a few portfolios from um, students a grade ahead of me and I thought they were amazing. There were these books with almost describing everyone's lives and their challenges and their accomplishments, but they were put together almost like works of art. And I was so excited to be able to build this myself. And then grade 11 came along and I'm designing the cover of my portfolio and I'm excited and then the teacher hands out the first reflection, a one-page write-up about an aspect of my life. And I was like, wait a minute, this class is supposed to be fun. I don't want to write. And more reflections came, and slowly my excitement for this class disappeared. And I regretted going there every day, and it seemed like I was wasting my time. And it wasn't really till the first month or two in class that I started to appreciate what was forming. This, in this book was now all of my accomplishments of my high school years and all the things that I was proud of that now I had together for me to look at in the future or for anyone else to look at. And I was, I was starting to build more confidence and start to appreciate this class way more. I wonder if you can talk to me a little bit about um, how the whole presentation process was for you because I know that um, that's what's so scary for so many kids is, is actually presenting a portfolio in front of someone. Can you talk to me a little bit about how that was for you? So I think that the interview was definitely one of the hardest parts of the portfolio process because that meant that not only you had to reflect about your life and your accomplishments, but now you had to present it to someone with a community that you didn't know. And that can be frightening to a lot of people. And so grade 11, we started with presenting to peers, and that was scary. And then grade 12, we presented to um, staff members of the school, and that wasn't as bad because we felt that they knew us more personally and that um, they wouldn't be that harsh on us. <laughs> and then a few weeks later, it was the pre presentation to the community members, and that was one of the hardest parts for most of us, I think. It, we now had to open up everything to someone that we had no idea who they were, and it was definitely an experience. But I think that a lot of the students really grew from that, hearing the comments and um, how the people were interested in all of their accomplishments and how well they succeeded through high school. So yeah, I know just that um, so many of the kids felt that the presentations were really um, the most, you know, it's kind of scary part. So how did your specific presentation go? How was it for you? Well, my interview was definitely an interesting one. My teacher set me up with one of the teachers at the University of the Fraser Valley who was in the fine arts department, which is what I applied for in my whole secondary school. And I presented my portfolio, and that all went really well, and I was really excited and well proud of how everything had gone. And then um, as registration time came through and I had to present a design portfolio to the University of the Fraser Valley, I it, I sent it in and it was kind of a rush thing for me and I was going away and it was a big deal but I went to the University of the Fraser Valley for an orientation day to learn about what classes I should take and um, I found out that I had indeed been accepted to the university and I later found out that the, the teacher who reviewed my design portfolio was also the same community member who reviewed my school portfolio. And because he'd done this and already talked to me and talked about what I'd been through and all my accomplishments and stuff, he said that he didn't need to see an interview and that I was just automatically accepted to the school. We're here today to, to try and get some insights from our graduating students on exactly what the Grad Transitions program has meant for them, uh, what you've gotten out of the portfolio experience. and what it's meant for you, uh, how it's helped shape and develop your growth and experience. So maybe Luke, if you could start us off there and uh, 
share some insights uh, on your experience, that would be great. Well, really when I first started Portfolio, I didn't really see much worth in it. A lot of it was just doing reflections about stuff we did when we were younger and stuff like that. But really it was tuning us forward to what we were going to do later on. Um, I got a lot of worth out of the whole researching schools and researching exactly what courses I wanted to go into. Um, up until grade 12, I wanted to do computer science. Um, and then once I got into more researching the courses and stuff like that, I found that software engineering was more exactly what I wanted to go into and that software engineering was more sought after in the, in the computer programming field. Um, I wouldn't have found that if it wasn't for grad transitions. Um, also, I learned a lot about applying for schools and really just researching what I wanted to do after high school. So. Well, you, you talked to me earlier also about uh, what you found to, to be really uh, an important component of this process and you talked about reflection. Can you share a little bit more information on what, how that worked for you and what it meant for you? Well, I found that like in grade 10 when you really start portfolio, everyone doesn't really like it. They've heard a lot of bad stuff about it, but then she gets you writing these reflections and you write a couple and they don't really seem to mean anything to you, but then you start looking back at the reflections that you've written as they're in your binder and you notice that they're all, they all seem to tune into the same thing, they all flow. Um, and then you notice, you really see what you care about and you really can think about it at that point, if I'm writing all this stuff about similar topics, maybe this is what I really want to go into when I'm older. If I'm this interested in it now, why would I be less interested in it later? So through all the little things that you do really show you what you want to go into. And then in grade 11 and grade 12, when you're actually picking courses uh, for university and for high school, it really shows you like what you need to tune in for. You can actually pick degrees rather than just broad aspects of what you can do later on. So in, in terms of our presentations and the process of the presentations, we had uh, an opportunity to do a practice presentation to members of our staff and then uh, the final presentation to members of our community. Um, how did you find the presentations? What, what value did they bring to the process for you? And how, how did you feel about actually doing them? Yeah, one thing I found that was really good was Ms. Turpin and I believe Ms. Wolgram and a few other teachers really um, got together and talked about the students and figured out what they were really into and found um, people in the community that would pair up with them well. But then, when it was the more peer assessment, when it was with teachers, they're not peers, but if you're going close to them, you've got people that were very different. So you get both sides of it. There's a teacher that you don't really know that well, um, but you've seen it around a lot, and then there's the community member that you don't know at all, but is very interested in what they're doing. Um, so when we had the community presentation, it was very easy to alter focus away from necessarily me completely, but more on the things that I've done. So I was much more um, calm and I could really get down to business and tell him things quickly and get my get the things that I've done out there. Um, and then in the, the teachers, when I was presenting to the teachers, I have Mr. Clements. Uh, I don't really know Mr. Clements, Mr. Clements doesn't really know me, um, but I thought it was really cool that he was very interested in what I had done, um, what I had built, what I had created when I really didn't know him and he really didn't know anything about what I was really doing. Um, so it was really cool to be both sides. Thanks, Luke. That's great. Can, can you put this into some context, maybe for some of our students coming out of planning and, and who are just making grad transitions and are working towards you know, completing the grad transitions? What, what would you be saying to them? What should they be focusing on and thinking about and doing? Well, one big thing, like, you hear a lot of negativity about this um, course in school, and what a lot of people don't like is they say um, a lot of what they do is useless, you say. Um, but what you have to find is that in a lot of courses, there's a lot of things that you won't necessarily use. What you have to figure out is that a lot of things you can manipulate. So basically, if you don't know what course you're going into in university, you really need to focus on that. And you can guide your grad transitions into that direction. Ms. Turpin will help you out a lot. Ms. Wolgram will help you out a lot. If you show passion in that direction, Ms. Turpin will literally like almost change your course to be more focused on that. So if you try and derive most you can from this course, it will happen.